paid stock tapes and oh my TV God. matches to all the nerves. Hi, I am Verna Street and I am live from the Raven Street Dance Studio. Today we are in the Little Earth Indian community um, on Franklin and Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are blessed to be visiting with Charlie Norris. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Thank you for having me on here. Thank you. Cool. And um, today we are talking with um, you because you have lived a very um, eventful life as a pro wrestler, correct? Yes, I have. And so um, this is you um, in the video here that we're watching via YouTube. <laughs> so where are you from? Where um, d does your Native American blood come from? Um, before that, I'd like to say uh, my, my partner there, Mr. Saido, uh, he just recently passed away a few weeks ago. So I just want to say shout out to Mr. Saido. He's a good buddy of mine. And um, before that, and your question was, where was I from again? Yes. I'm from Red Lake Indian Reservation, born in Chicago, 1963, lived in Chicago, 63 to 69, moved here to Franklin Avenue behind the Franklin Library in 1969 to 1976, and then we moved to the reservation in 1976 to 79, and get moved back here to Minneapolis, and I graduated South High Basketball as a first team all city basketball player. That's awesome. So um, your, a lot of your roots are right here um, in this Little Earth area, the community. Yes, yes. And in between all that, I lived on the reservation a good quarter, half of the time. Okay. So during that, I never was So far. what was it like growing up? Uh, it was great. I lived on Franklin Avenue in, in the beginning in nineteen in the early 70s, right around that time when uh, the AIM office was just opening up and they were having so much trouble with the cops and... Uh, Vernon Belcourt and Clyde Belcourt. I remember I was a kid riding my bike down the street one time and it looked like they were having some kind of disagreement and I was scared of them because on TV they were portrayed as bad people. And I, and I, I turned and Vernon turned around and looked at me and he said, hey little brother, hey little brother Clyde. He said, hey little brother. And I never did tell him about that. They're both friends of mine now. But, but I lived during that period and it was a very, um, not at the time knowing it because I was only eight, nine, ten years old. That was a very, uh, the wounded knee and, and the longest walk was happening in 1973. So, um, sorry to get off to what we were no, talking that, about. No, that's part. That's a part of the culture yeah, here. This community so. was started by the members of AIM that wanted the Native Americans that had been brought to the inner city to have a place. Um, there isn't reservation land here, so mm -hmm. a lot of the different reservations all are coming together. Mm -hmm. So they formed a little earth community that is still here today, and yep. Native Americans still reside here. Yes, awesome. that's great to see. I spent a lot of my childhood here, a lot of my different, this is really a big part of my childhood. I'd rather be here than a condo out in Edina. I mean, honestly, I feel safer here than anywhere. That's cool. So. You have a lot of roots here. So what influences helped you get into wrestling? Uh, when I was four years old, I remember my my babysitter in Chicago. Her name was Babe Busher, and uh, her there was another lady. Her name was Obel. They told everybody I was going to be a pro wrestler. So when I was four years old, it was instilled in my mind. And I, I watched it so much over the years, so intently, so um, I paid attention to it where when I did do it, a lot of the stuff came natural to me. In my back of my mind, I knew I was gonna do that. But first I went to college, played basketball and all that. And then I prayed and I, I asked for opportunities to meet the right people so I can get into this sport, which I want to. So I did pray for the right opportunities. I got to meet the great Eddie Sharkey who trained uh, Jesse Ventura, the Road Warriors, um, uh, Rick Rude. The, and and the, the best in the world. He, he trained the best in the world. So um, we had our first wrestling match at the Indian Center, 800 people. I, I was working there at the time as a, as a recreation director, and I gave out free tickets to all the Indian kids and everybody. So 800 people of natives there for one night was a good feeling. Um, is that the first time that you wrestled? Uh, uh, that was my first match, scared to death, scared <laughs> to death. Oh man, I was so scared. 
Yeah, but uh, a lot of my fans were there, and I couldn't believe it that, wow, you know. I mean, I always knew I was going to do it, but once you get in the ring under the lights and right. everything, you're like, this is what you asked for. That's awesome. So you, you spoke your reality. You knew it from a child, and then you aspired to do it, and mm -hmm. then you became successful at it. Mm -hmm. That's and, awesome. And hopefully later on I can show you pictures of when I was little. I made my own championship belts out of plastic sleds. I pose as a wrestler. So I watch <laughs> wrestling. I studied it. So. So it it was you. It was installed instilled in. It, that's what I was gonna do. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so um, who were some of the um, wrestlers that you looked up to, um, um, when you were a kid or when you were aspiring? Well, to as a wrestling? kid, of course, I liked the Crusher and the Bruiser, Red Bastine, who turned out to be a good friend of mine. Um, I liked the Vachans, Butcher, and Mad Dog. I got the fortunate to meet them a few times on autograph sessions they were doing the crusher i got to meet him at the target center one night he was doing a special with the bushwhackers or something later you know he was past retired but you know i took all these pictures i never took pictures with him which i always wished now i when i wanted to but those are the kind of guys i liked you know the rough kind uh, and of course wahoo mcdaniel yeah that's one of our favorites. <laughs> yeah, man. That's he was awesome. bad. That's he was... cool. So um, you um, aspired to be a pro wrestler. You became pro. So what transpired that kept you from staying in pro wrestling? What inspired me to keep going? Or no, what what happened where you had to get out of it? Where you? Um... Oh, I have a reoccurring blood clot problem. And um, uh, they, the doctors don't figure, can't figure it out. Um, so... Even though against doctor's orders, I still did it. I would get off my blood center and put it in the creator's hands. You know, it was scary knowing something had happened to me on live television, but um, the creator had my back and I believe that. So that's what I would go on. But every once in a while I'd have a major blow to my body or something where I'd have a blood clot. I'd have to take six months, a year off and then that was just part of it. The other part was uh, Eric Bischoff fired me from World Championship Wrestling. And um, we, um, what were we talking about now? We, uh, <laughs> the reason why, um, is it true that um, the, um, the different television or the networks that you worked for, that they um, wanted you to portray uh, Native Americans in an un- you know, favorable way, and so that was part of the reason why you left for wrestling. They asked that ain't that ain't that ain't the reason. Um, part of the reason was me not wanting to portray okay. the the native the natives the way they wanted to be. Okay. Um, they could have hired Lloyd the janitor and made him go out there and go and act like uh, those Indians on F Troop. I, mean, I was serious. I was a serious athlete. I went through elite camps. Um, not that I'm better than anybody or all, anything or all, but I would never, ever go on TV and make fun of our people, our native, our, our, our. It wasn't even about money then. It's like, <laughs> really? You're asking me to do this? No, no. So. Um, they, uh, we got fired. Me and Stone Cold Steve Austin got fired. Those geniuses fired Stone Cold Steve Austin. Imagine <laughs> that. Um, they fired a lot of people. X Pac, you know, you know all, of, and they all and the the, the foundation that the whole thing went under. So I'm not saying I was right, but Larry Leventhal agreed, talked me into. He hired me. Vernon Belcourt talked to me too to sue him because they wouldn't give me my money or wouldn't let me out of my contract. So. Uh, Larry Leventhal got on board, and he did. Uh, he should have heard him how he took on Ted Toy, uh, Ted Turner's lawyers. Um, Larry Leventhal was the best, and we won my lawsuit. We got the money they owed me, and so, um, were we talking about that or yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about all of it. We're talking about. I had a lot of concussions. <laughs> Well, we talked about how your health did affect um, you from wrestling. And so now, um, let's move a little forward. We wanted to talk about today you have um, diabetes. Is that true? Yes. 
Okay, so how have you changed around um, your health to beat diabetes? Uh, well, I am um, alcohol free for 12 years now. Awesome. Um, I, uh, I had to change a lot of stuff that I didn't want to. I like to eat pizza at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, but now um, I, I, I can have a couple bites, but don't eat the whole pizza. So I've disciplined myself over the years. I've always been a husky kid. I was very, very picked on as a youngster because I was overweight. So I know how it feels. Um, yeah, those are very young in my career. Canadian heavyweight champion right there. That's awesome. Yeah. So what do you want to say to the youth today as far as, um, you know, you had a dream and then you fulfilled your dream of being, a, you know, a professional wrestler. Um, what would you like to say to the youth to inspire them? Write your plan and plan your work and um, keep asking questions. When you pray to the Creator with your true meaning and true soul, He'll listen to you and He knows that you're real. Um, if you made a mistake yesterday, if He's forgiven you, move on from that. Think about today, how productive you are today, what you can do to help our fellow natives out. Um, a lot of our people need help right now with the um, massive uh, problem that's going on. Um, so I would say, uh, ask someone that you trust, tell them what's going on and also, uh, ask the creator for help and thank him for, you know, being alive and, you know, um, it, I think there's going to be more of this interview. It feels like yes. we haven't even talked about it. Yes, we will definitely water. come back with a part two for Mr. Yeah. Charlie Norris. But thank you so much for yeah. talking uh, with me today. Yeah. I like to talk. So. <laughs>